Good morning, students. Welcome back to your regular class again today. Well, I hope you have done your exams well, and I'm sure you must be happy with your marks. All right. For those who did not do well, I would say don't worry. Be focused on your studies now. You're going to have a long holiday, so please don't waste it. I would not say that don't study at all. You have to study, right? Even for your holidays, since you're in the tenth standard, I would advise you fix a time, children. It would be early in the morning. It could be late in the night. Whatever time, whichever is convenient for you, please fix that time for studies. Holidays doesn't mean that you're going to be relaxing the whole day or you know just wasting your time. So it's a kind request to you. Please fix a time for study. And when you do that, and when your exams come, you will not be stressed out because you've already done it. So you just have to revise it over. Well, coming back to what we had done, so uh, children, we had done letter writing, and I had done with you informal letter, okay? And we did the format how you're supposed to write the informal letter. Today, we will be doing formal letters. Hmm? So let's start. Now we saw into the classification of letters. Letters are broadly classified as formal and informal. Well, and out of that we have already done informal. So informal letters is used when writing to a friend or family member, and they are relaxed and familiar. You know those people who you are writing to. That is called familiar. As a result, the language can be friendlier, and the letter handwritten. Now informal letters you can even Have a handwritten, okay? But let's come to formal letters. As we're going to do that today. Formal letter or formal letters used when writing to someone who you do not know, or the content of the letter is not personal. Examples: If you're going to write a job application letter or complain, you know, you're complaining about something to an authority. So that letter is formal letter. Now, to give a professional look, formal letters should be typed on the computer. Now, when you give a formal letter, sometimes, of course, you you write handwritten letters, but it's very, you know, to give it a professional look, you should type it on the computer. And you cannot just write what you want to write. Be very, very careful when you're writing a formal letter. Now, before you write a letter, children, I've done this. Six steps, even for informal letter. What are the things that you should do? Very, very important before you start writing a letter. Brainstorm for ideas. All right. Think before you write. What you are going to write. How you going to write. It, how many para? You no. Know, and what? What you going to put? What para? What uh, words? You know. So what idea you going to put in which para? So that all you going to brainstorm. Organize your ideas. Organize. You're writing first para, second para, third para. Organize it. Focus on language, grammatical mistake. You know when it comes to spellings, all these. Be careful because that all counts for marks. Write a draft. Write it in rough first. It needs a little more work. But let me tell you, children. If you do that, you're going to write lovely letters. So write a draft. Don't go in for an easy job. Just take your pen and just scribble down something. Write a draft. Okay, improve your draft after you've written. Look at it. Is it okay? Should I make it final? Or if not, make some corrections there, and then you write your final draft. Look at that smile on her face. She's happy because you know she's looking at her work and she's saying, "Oh, this final draft is good." Remember, you're giving your work to your teacher. Always give a good work to your teacher. Okay, so coming to The formal letter, as we said, it is written to people who you do not know, who you are not familiar with. It's business or professional purpose, and you have to write it in simple language, but correct language. Remember, simple language but correct language. Now here you can see the pic of the government building. Okay, so it's, it could be to a government authority, and here you can see the bar graph. You know, it's talking. You know, you can see that it is going at a higher altitude. That means higher. Authorities. Okay, so you're writing a formal letter. 
to a higher authority person. So, what is the format of a formal letter? Let's see. Now we have here, you have eight, okay, clockwise, we have eight points. If you remember these points, children, you will make a mistake while writing your formal letter. So I advise you, please take your notebook and write this, make this diagram, okay? Draw this figure, it will be nice. Because if you have this figure in your mind, you know exactly which step is after which step, okay? So please do this. So coming to the first step, name and address, that is sender's detail, that's your address, okay, and detail. Then you have the date. The date also can be put this way. Look at the date put there. Receiver's detail. And this is something that you didn't do in any formal letter. You didn't write, you know, who you're writing. This is whom you're writing the letter to. Okay, so receiver's detail, the one who's going to receive your letter. Did you understand? Okay, so receiver's detail. The name and address. Then salutation, this you have done. But here in salutation and formal letters, you cannot put my dear or whatever. Okay, it should be respect. So dear sir or madam or respected sir also would do. Okay, remember that. Then this is also what we did not do in informal letter that is subject children. What the letter is about. Now, why do we write a subject in a formal letter? Let me tell you this. Then it makes sense. Okay. Now, suppose the prime minister, you're writing a letter to the prime minister of our country. Okay, Mr. Modi. Now, you are writing regarding probably, you know, with the, uh, something to do with the water supply. Now, if you want to write that to the Prime Minister, he should know, because there are so many letters coming here. So, he should know what is the subject of the letter. Now, when he reads, opens your letter and he sees the subject, okay, this is relating to the water or whatever. So, what does he do? He directs that letter to the respected authority, mean the Minister. If the Minister, suppose you've written uh, relating to railways, okay, some problem relating to railways, that letter will be directed to the railway minister. Did you get that? So the subject is very important. Now take for example, you're writing to the principal of our school. Now our principal gets many letters. There are so many letters that may come to her because she is involved in so many other things, right? So when you write the subject, now children write letters, you know, uh, relating to many things. It could be to the librarian, some, com some books they need or something like that holidays or other issues, whatever. So if you write the subject, what happens? When the principal reads the subject, she comes to know, oh, so this is relating to this. So she can direct that letter maybe. Now suppose if it is regarding your holiday, she'll direct it to the class teacher. So the class teacher knows, okay, this child is going to take holiday. Now you understood why the subject is very important when you write a formal letter, okay? That is what is not then an informal letter. Then, then you're coming to the body, that is the actual message. Then Complimentary close, that is your, uh, yours faithfully or sincerely and designation is name and signature. So let's come. Now I want you to know that when we're talking about the body of the letter, children, it is in three parts, introduction, main, content and summary. Okay, remember these points. Introduction, main, content, summary. When you're writing what? The body of the letter. You remember the letter is much. How many points are there in the format? Eight points. Please remember that. This is body, three parts. Now, come to a letter. Write a letter to the editor of a newspaper on the issue of bad condition of roads in your locality. Now, children, whenever you get a question relating to letter writing, I'm requesting you, please read the question properly. Understand the question. Who is the letter? To whom I have to address the letter? Now here it is to whom I have to write it to the editor of a newspaper. What letter? What kind of letter is this? What issue? Issue of bad condition of roads in your locality. So the roads are bad. You are going to write relating to that. Now if you have understood the question well, you will write the letter correctly. Many a time children now just read the question and they write something else. So please children, it's just a request, read your question properly. Doesn't matter if you're wasting more time just reading your question. At least you will write a correct letter. Now this is what, you know, the points are. You have the sender's address, that is yours. This is just an example given. Here will be your address, then the date. Receiver's address, to whom you're writing. Now this letter was to the editor, so it's the editor, okay? Then and the address, 
then dear sir that salutation that subject subject is what regarding bad condition of road and remember children the condition will be already given to you the issue is already given in the question itself okay the subject so you are going to see what is the subject from the question and then you write it down in in your letter okay and that doesn't have to have be a long lengthy you know sentence it's this subject regarding bad condition of roads that is more than enough okay then body of the letter remember is three parts that is the introduction then the the main part and uh, main part of the letter and the third is the summary then yours faithfully that is complimentary closure okay yours faithfully very important there's a comma your punctuation and signature now this is this is the you have written the address the date the receivers then salutation subject now coming to the body of the letter now i'm just reading the letter listen carefully through the columns of your esteemed newspaper i would like to draw the attention of the concerned authorities towards the bad condition of roads in our locality the condition of roads is completely unacceptable it has countless potholes you know what is potholes okay making the purpose of the road a big failure moreover things even get even worse during the rainy season when potholes are not visible what do you mean by not visible not seen now when the potholes are not seen now why potholes are not seen due to the poor drainage system now drainage system if it is not cleaned what happens water collects and you can't see the potholes so what happens if the you know the vehicle is going in full speed what happens there can be an accident so and the area becomes heavily accident prone what do you mean by accident prone means um, many accidents take place in that area because there are a lot of potholes which are not visible and why they are not vis visible because of poor drainage system sometimes it could be even because of power failure in the night time when there is no light on the road you know no electricity you know you there can be accidents the road users and especially residents are facing a lot of inconvenience now this word is very important when it comes to your letter okay so learn the spellings also well inconvenience due to the pathetic road condition pathetic means very sad condition of the roads today you see this is the major problem in our country today very bad pathetic roads no it would be good if you publish this in your newspaper and the concerned authorities will see the gravity of this matter and some measures will be adopted to improve the condition of roads i hope that you consider the request of the residents of this area and take proper action so this is the body of the letter chain three paragraphs started off with you know the introduction then the main point and coming to the sum so you've got homework as you know you've got a long holiday but as i said if you're not going to just you know be studying or just enjoying you have to do both balance you know your work so the homework is what write a letter to the principal of your school seeking permission to take a week holiday to attend your cousin's wedding reception remember the eight points that we have done children stick to that go through this letter again and you will understand how to do it okay write in your own words don't try to copy your letter please never copy anybody's letter it's going to be your letter remember that Yes, you can read some letters and get some ideas. Okay, write on your own. Before I leave, I just want to give you this thought too. It says, formal education will make you a living. What you're receiving now is what formal education, right, from school. It will make you a living. Meaning, you get your degree, you're going to earn. No, that's what most of us want to do when we grow up. But self-education will make you a fortune. You know, today, children, it's not enough of what you have just read or what you've learned from school. You can always have your self-education. Educate yourself. You can always go. Now, today we have so many resources around. Only a lazy person will say that, oh, "What can I do? What you know? I cannot do this. I cannot make excuses." Today, even with your limited resources, you can do much. All right. So, educate yourself. Self-education will make you a fortune. Means you will do still better. Okay. Thank you children for all that you are doing and God bless you.